Welcome to the Church of Our Lady of the Lakes. We would like to welcome all visitors and members of this area faith community. In a very special way, we welcome Terry and Randy Ryan, who observed their 50th wedding anniversary this past April and are celebrating that event with their families this weekend. During the collection today, we will be showing a short video clip from the Vacation Bible School held this past week. God has gathered us together to renew our efforts in sharing the life of Christ and being the love of Christ. So let us now stand and greet the presence of Christ in one another. <clears throat> And now as we are drawn forth to the table of life, please join us in singing our gathering hymn, number 313 or on the screen, Gather Your People, number 313. We'll be singing verses one and two. Good morning. Good morning. Together we pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Always called to holiness, we pray for God's healing, mercy, and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you are the way, the truth, and the life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. And glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High. 
the glory of God the Father. And let us pray. O God, from whom all good things come, grant that we who call on you in our need may at your prompting discern what is right and by your guidance do it through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. After the man, Adam, had eaten of the tree, the Lord called to the man and asked him, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, but I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid myself. Then he asked, Who told you that you were naked? You have eaten then from the tree of which I have forbidden you to eat. The man replied, The woman whom you put here with me, she gave me the fruit from the tree, so I ate it. The Lord God then asked the woman, Why did you do such a thing? The woman answered, The serpent tricked me into it, so I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you shall be banned from all the animals, from all the wild creatures. On your belly shall you crawl, and dirt shall you eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will strike at your head while you strike at his heel. The word of the Lord. Our response to the first reading is only found on the screen in front of you. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Please sing out on the refrain. We'll be singing along with you.
reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, since we have the same spirit of faith according to what is written, I believed, therefore I spoke. We too believe and therefore we speak, knowing that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and place us with you in his presence. Everything indeed is for you, so that the grace bestowed in abundance on more and more people may cause the thanksgiving to overflow for the glory of God. Therefore, we are not discouraged. Rather, although our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this momentary light affliction is producing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison as we look not to what is seen, but to what is unseen. For what is seen is transitory, but what is unseen is eternal. For we know that if our earthly dwelling, a tent, should be destroyed, we have a building from God, a dwelling not made with hands, eternal in heaven. The word of the Lord. you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus came home with his disciples. Again the crowd gathered, making it impossible for them even to eat. When his relatives heard of this, they set out to seize him, for they said, he is out of his mind. The scribes who had come from Jerusalem said, he is possessed by Beelzebul and by the prince of demons he drives out demons. Summoning them, he began to speak to them in parables. How can Satan drive out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand. That is the end of him. But no one can enter a strong man's house to plunder his property unless he first ties up the strong man. Then he can plunder the house. Amen, I say to you, all sins and all blasphemies that people utter will be forgiven them. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an everlasting sin. For they had said, he has an unclean spirit. His mother and his brothers arrived, standing outside. They sent word to him and called him. A crowd seated around him told him, your mother and your brothers and your sisters are outside asking for you. But he said to them in reply, who are my mother and my brothers? And looking around at those seated in the circle, he said, here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise 
Are you out of your mind? What were you thinking? Have you lost your marbles? Are you nuts? Sometimes I think your head isn't attached. Are you possessed? What do you expect your relatives and neighbors to think? Now, most of us have heard or said such things when someone has done something wrong, stupid, weird, or something that did not meet our standard of acceptable behavior. Similar reactions and comments like those I used have been common for centuries, even in Jesus' family, as described in today's gospel. Jesus' family came to the conclusion that he'd gone crazy. What did they base their judgment on? Word had gotten back to his hometown that Jesus had gained fame as an exorcist and healer. He had become known as a Jewish man who would touch and talk to women, even Samaritans, outcasts, and prostitutes. Jesus was also touching lepers, eating with sinners, and proclaiming forgiveness of people's sins. He was disregarding pious Jewish fasting practices and provoking the wrath of the Jewish religious authorities by openly violating Sabbath laws and restrictions. Jewish authorities saw Jesus as a renegade, a radical, a wild man, a troublemaker, a threat, and a danger to the Jewish religion when people started following and listening to him. In his culture, everything one did reflected on one's family and relatives. Jesus was just getting to be too much to handle, and his family viewed him as having gone off the deep end. Now, we have the advantage of knowing the rest of the story about Jesus, but if we can just set that aside for a few moments, I invite you to put yourself back in time in the gospel scene and decide with whom you would be standing. You might be inside the house listening to Jesus, wondering what he was about, curious about things that you had heard about him, willing to listen, yet worried that you might have to take a stand or make a commitment. Some of us may have to admit that we like to play things safe, go by the rules, and are stuck in our ways and would be standing with the scribes who know the rules and who would say, nothing is going to change my mind, especially not that guy, Jesus. Others of us might be with the family and relatives outside the door who just can't believe God would want things to change so much and therefore are praying that everything can just get back to normal if we can just get a chance to talk some sense into Jesus and get him to quit causing trouble. Now, no matter which group we would identify with more, Mark tells us this story to show that Jesus offers everyone a place in his inner circle, not just blood relatives. He, but becoming part of that circle, his mother, his brother and sister, both back then and now, demands we drop all claims to importance based on race or gender, nationality, profession, economic status, or anything else. We also have to learn to grasp our certainties loosely and be willing to let additional revelations change our mind. In other words, the my way or the highway attitude has to go. Being totally set in our ways and closed-mindedness are not helpful and can lead to stagnation and even sin. That sin was also mentioned in the gospel 
in the harshest statement that Jesus makes in any of the Gospels where he said, whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never know forgiveness. Now, what is this unforgivable sin? This sin is the refusal to acknowledge that God is at work in all that gives life, heals, or frees human beings. The scribes in this gospel declare that Jesus was possessed, was doing the devil's work, and could not possibly be revealing God, the divine, in spite of the wonderful life-giving and healing works that Jesus was performing. He did not fit their categories or follow their interpretation of the law. Their law was supreme. Their blasphemy was that they made their own teachings and theology their God. As long as they maintain that position, they kept themselves safe from any disturbance by the Holy Spirit. They would not grow in the love or knowledge of God, and they would not have to change and without any change, they would never know forgiveness. So our biggest challenges today are about our stubbornness in life and religion, our closed-mindedness that does not welcome new insights, new information, new revelations, or new people. Staying stuck in our prejudices and harsh judgments of others has to be abandoned as we continue to build God's kingdom based on humility, forgiveness, understanding, inclusion, and love. That is the only kingdom that is available, made known to us by a radically loving man, not a man out of his mind, just someone who loved with every fiber of his being, Jesus of Nazareth. Let us profess our faith together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now let us bring our special prayers for this week before our God. For the whole church, that we may manifest God's love, mercy, and forgiveness to all, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders throughout the world, that they may be open to the needs of those they serve rather than seeking praise for themselves, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For a spirit of hospitality, so that visitors and immigrants who come to our communities may feel welcome and willingly share the gifts they bring, we pray. 
Fly the airplane. For favorable weather for our growing season, we pray. Fly the airplane. For those who are sick, that they may know compassionate care, and for those who have died, that they may share in God's eternal glory, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers we hold in our hearts and for the intentions written in the Book of Prayer requests, we pray. Oh Lord, hear our prayer. For God's special blessing on Terry and Randy Ryan as they celebrate their 50th wedding anniversary with their family, we pray. Oh Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, we ask you to hear our prayers which we bring to you today in your Son's name, Christ, our loving Lord. Amen. Sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look kindly upon our service, O Lord, that what we offer may be an acceptable oblation to you and lead us to grow in charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. 
It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love, his resurrection we confess with living faith, and his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. <laughs> Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, John, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Now together, let us stand and pray in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy 
we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other some sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. song during communion is We Are Many Parts. Number 583 in the songbook, 583. And the gifts we have. 
This time I'd like to give to Terry and Randy a 50th wedding anniversary blessing. And let us pray. Almighty God, creator of the universe and creator of man and woman in your own likeness, source of blessing for married life, we humbly pray for Terry and Ryan who are celebrating their 50th wedding anniversary. May your fullest blessing come upon them so that they may continue to rejoice in your gift of married love. Lord, may they both praise you when they are happy and turn to you in their sorrows. May they be glad that you continue to help them in their work and know that you are with them in their need. May they continue to pray to you in the community of the church and be your witnesses in the world. And may they celebrate their years in the company of their friends and family and come at last to the kingdom of heaven. Randy and Terry, may Almighty God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Congratulations. I wonder how many times in 50 years they have said to each other, what were you thinking? (laughs) (laughs) 
and let us pray. May your healing work, O Lord, free us from doing evil and lead us to what is right through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless each of us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended now. Let us go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another. Have a great week. Well, thank you very much for coming out to celebrate with us on this Sunday morning. Our song for going forth is Oh, Bless the Lord, number 559 in the songbook, 559. We'll sing verses 1, 2, and 4, 1, 2, and 4, and let's join our voices together to conclude our celebration. Congratulations, Terry and Randy Ryan.